Today is going to be the last of the testing with the Intel Arc GPUs, in particular the Battlemage B580. And this one came about because people were telling me that the resizable bar option in your BIOS, you have to have this on, otherwise you are going to lose a lot of performance when it comes to using an Intel graphics card in your system. And then I checked out, I got recommended a video from Random Gaming in HD, and I saw just how big of a difference the numbers he was showing, and I thought, wow, this is insane. I don't think I've seen one particular setting, whether it's enabled or disabled, have such a big effect on gaming performance. However, here we are now in 2025, with this magical setting called resizable bar. You may be wondering, what is this setting? Well, it just means resizable base address register. And so every time the CPU wants access to the graphics card, in particular, its frame buffer, with this setting off, it can typically do it in maximum of, I believe, 256 megabyte chunks. But with this setting enabled, it now has pretty much complete unrestricted access to that frame buffer. And so essentially it can make the whole process more efficient. And as we know with newer games, assets in those games are just becoming bigger and bigger. Shaders are getting more complex, textures are getting larger. And all of this essentially means that the CPU needs a lot more than 256 megabyte limit. Though how much of a difference does this setting make on the B580 Battlemage GPU? versus say Nvidia's RTX 4060 and versus the AMD Radeon RX 7600. Well, let's find out right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows 10 or Windows 11 activated and don't want to spend $200 or some other exorbitant price? Well, if so, today's video sponsor VIP SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as $15 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 activated. And for a little bit more, you can get Windows 11 activated too. Links in the description below to find out more. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Now for all these games, we're testing at 1440p and at ultra settings, or in the case of Fortnite, epic settings. But let's get straight into those games, starting off with Red Dead Redemption 2, which was one of the games that Random Gaming HD showed had a massive difference. I had to see this for myself because I just couldn't believe this could be this much of a drop on the Intel card. And sure enough, it was indeed a massive drop. Not just was the average FPS lower with resizable bar off, but also the 0.1% lows. And in this case, it reports a minimum FPS as well. They were much, much lower than with this setting enabled. Now the Nvidia card really only dropped down three average FPS here, now putting it much further ahead of the Intel card and the 0.1% lows were still absolutely fine. And the AMD card, the RX 7600, fed absolutely fine too. Moving over now to Borderlands 3 was also another disaster for the Battlemage B580 with resizable bar off, of course. And we saw 81 FPS then dropping down to 58 and then also the 0.1% lows suffered greatly. The Nvidia card really suffered not much of a difference here. And then the RX 7600, that didn't suffer too much of a difference either. Though moving on now to Fortnite, and here is where we saw a significant drop, though not as big as the previous two games, like Red Dead Redemption 2 or Borderlands 3. But here in Fortnite, you still did see, again, a big chunk in performance missing, but it mainly just affected the average FPS. The 0.1% lows were still kind of unaffected. And then looking at the Nvidia card, that scored the best results both before and after, and both on the 0.1% lows and average FPS. And then the AMD card not really getting affected a whole lot as well. On to Cyberpunk 2077, showed us that there was, again, a big chunk of performance missing here when we have resizable bar disabled, on the B580, then the Nvidia card lost two average FPS, and then the AMD card lost one average FPS for this particular benchmark, holding the exact same 0.1% lows. So we can see here that the AMD card for Cyberpunk 2077 fared the best, followed closely by the Nvidia card, then again, the Battlemage B580 well behind. Though onto the last title here, this is Baldur's Gate 3, and here is where we saw actually not such a huge drop in performance, going from 70 average FPS to 64, but the 0.1% lows did suffer quite a bit in this particular benchmark that we ran, and then the RTX 4060, as well as the RX 7600, 
they really didn't suffer a whole lot in this particular benchmark with a sizable bar off versus on. So now we've finished those benchmarks, the answers that we seek with the Intel GPUs is very simple. And that is, you're gonna to want to have resizable bar on. If you're buying a Battlemage GPU, you're also an Alchemist GPU. Intel does recommend that you do have a configuration with resizable bar on. However, it's not a prerequisite. If you don't have resizable bar on, it's not gonna just suddenly mean you can't play games at all. It's just as we saw with those benchmarks, you're going to have a very suboptimal experience to the point where your FPS can nearly drop down half in certain titles as we saw with Red Dead Redemption 2. That was actually a real eye opener for me to how much this setting actually influences Intel's uh, FPS numbers, especially on the charts when we look at it all in pretty graphs. Though I wasn't just done there. I wanted to dig further in and get a bit more research done into what was happening here. Was it just the resizable bar setting? Was it perhaps that we used a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D? Or was it something else that we were unaware of? And so I tried uh, putting this GPU, the B580, in an older system. And sure enough, Red Dead Redemption 2 saw the same massive drop with resizable bar disabled. This was the i5 10400T system. And actually, yesterday's video, we took a look at this particular system versus the Ryzen 7 to see how much performance you're missing out on by not going with a faster CPU. Very interesting information there. The Intel B580 didn't fare too poorly, but it did suffer in some titles a significant FPS drop. Though also getting back on topic, I decided to leave above 4G decoding, just that setting enabled, and then just disable the resizable bar setting in both the BIOS settings on the older system and the newer system, and that didn't make a difference either. We were still seeing a massive FPS drop. And the weird thing is here, some users have reported that just leaving above 4G decoding on can actually increase that um, access from the CPU to the frame buffer and make it quite a bit larger. And so I think they, when I was reading up about it, people were doing this on the AMD systems. So the Intel Battlemage B580 and also the Arc A770, I've tested this in the past, they both need resizable bar to get the best experience and actually get a good experience because you will get a bad experience in some titles if you have this setting off. And most of the time, it's gonna be a significant drop in performance. So whatever you do, try to have this setting running. Now here's where a big dilemma comes in, and that is most systems, especially pre-2020, I find don't have this setting unlocked in the BIOS. And in fact, it's just not even there, where the saddest thing of all is that from to apparently 2008 of April in the PCIe Gen 2 spec, there was an update that introduced support for the resizable bar. That's if the CPU and the motherboard and the graphics card all supported it. And so that was a long time ago, 17 years ago, that this was introduced officially in PCIe Gen 2. And so technically, pretty much all your PCs from 2008 could support resizable bar. But that would then mean the BIOS manufacturers would then have to go back and release BIOS updates for much older hardware and for them, they're probably thinking of it. There's no money for them to be made there. So they're just gonna leave those folks behind and hope that no one complains. But hey, I love my old used hardware. I'm gonna complain. Bring back some BIOS updates. Like please, at least for like eighth gen, I think like an 8700K is still an okay match with a B580, especially if you know how to tune your system. Thankfully, I was able to get my BIOS update and unlock the PCIe resizable bar on my H410 motherboard, but I'd still like to see this update be rolled out on certain motherboards and CPUs, especially that are still very capable of supporting a B580 graphics card. But this is where things start to turn into some good news, and that is there are custom ways to unlock resizable bar, and it doesn't really matter if the BIOS manufacturer has given you an update or not. And this is with a link to GitHub. I personally haven't tried this, but a few people say that they have had success unlocking resizable bar. So I'll put the link to that in the description below. If you've got say an older i7-8700K and you wanna think about getting a B580 Battlemage GPU, then you'll definitely wanna get resizable bar working before you buy the B580. Though when all's said and done, 
If you've got an Intel GPU, a dedicated Intel GPU, you are going to want to have resizable bar enabled. The results here definitely show that, where the decrease in FPS is just something phenomenal. It's actually unreal to the point where I couldn't believe it when I was seeing some of these numbers before I started testing. And then when I'm testing it, I'm just thinking, wow, this is crazy. And then this leads us on to a whole heap of different questions. A lot of people in the comments section from yesterday's video, they had a lot of questions too, which I personally wanna make a dedicated video to, or perhaps do a live stream and answer a lot of these questions. Though at least from a lot of this testing, I can correlate a lot of things together and just let you know, give you guys a brain dump and uh, let you know what I think's going on with the Intel GPUs and why in certain ways they perform so badly like resizable bar off or in certain titles with older systems, what's going on there? Because there is a lot to it and it starts to go pretty deep once you start getting into the realm of shaders, games, frame buffers, as well as things like resizable bar. And at least from what I've seen thus far, we've done enough testing to be able to give you guys a perhaps pretty accurate answer as to what's going on with the Intel Arc GPUs and the performance. So if you guys want to see either a live stream or a dedicated video about all that, let us know down below. Also, if you've got any questions about today's video or also the recent videos on the Intel Arc GPUs, then do let us know down below. And with all that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, hopefully I talked a little bit longer when we're showing the graphs. People said in yesterday's video, I was going way too quick with the graphs that they had to pause the video and actually just see what was going on. But that's because there was just a lot of graphs in yesterday's video. We had to show the original results, the new results on the older system, and then of course the performance differential results. And that was at two different resolutions. So hopefully today it was just a 1440p test, a lot more simpler, and hopefully I wasn't going too fast for you guys. Do apologize about it yesterday. It is what it is. I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.